In this video, we will look at the differences between diode lasers and CO2 lasers and answer any questions you might have about which would be the best fit for you. I was just given this diode laser, so first thing is to start with the assembly. It honestly is not hard to assemble, but I recommend you forget about the paper instructions and go watch the assembly video put out by Buster Beagle on YouTube. Follow along with him and you'll have the whole thing put together in less than 30 minutes. If you were to set up your laser inside, I would recommend just getting some type of box fan. But I'm going to put that fan there, turn it on, and that will extract the fumes, the smoke. One of the major upsides to the diode laser is it's so lightweight you can even hang it up on the wall to keep it out of the way when it's not in use. Here we've got it plugged in. I'm going to press and hold this button to reset it and get it going. I plug it into the computer and I'm using a program called Lightburn. Here I'm preparing some wood for a job that I'm working on currently. I would just sand it a little bit, add some masking to it, cut it off, and then I'm going to use this sprayer tool to press it down nice and tight. Now there are many different ways you can use your laser. This is just one technique that I use to get very consistent results. After running multiple tests, I found the sweet spot for speed and power to maximize the time. And with the clock there in the background, we can see that this first sign on the diode laser took one hour and 10 minutes to complete. And we'll compare that speed to the CO2 in just a little bit. But here the laser is removing the masking. And after that, I can just take some black spray paint and lightly spray into the engraving area. And then I can peel off the masking to reveal a perfectly consistent engraving area on this white painted wood sign. With the current price tag of $450 for this laser, I would be able to pay off this machine after just about 11 hours or making about 10 of these signs here. Now let's look at my 60 watt CO2 laser. Here we can see the chiller that you need to keep the glass tube in the back cool. The blue tube coming out is the fume exhaust that runs up to a fan. And there's also a pump that creates an air assist on it as well. So lots of different parts needed for a CO2 laser. And also I just want you to realize the footprint that it takes up. Um, it's a very dedicated machine it's not easy to move. You're definitely not going to hang this beast up on the wall. But now let's look at the benefits to a CO2 laser. It's very quick and it's very powerful. This one sign only took about 16 minutes to do. So that means in the amount of time that a diode laser can create one sign, this machine can create about four signs. Now with a price tag at $2,600, we would need to sell 58 of these $45 signs and with the speed of the CO2 laser that would take about 16 hours to complete the engravings. I also want to point out a major difference between diode and CO2 lasers. Diodes are really good for engraving. They're not so good at cutting. CO2 lasers are much better at cutting with this 60 watt laser. Cutting eighth inch quarter inch materials is pretty easy. As far as cutting with a diode laser, there are some things that you can do, but I will say that diode lasers are mainly utilized for their engraving capabilities. But if enough people are truly interested in the comparison between cutting on the diode and the CO2 laser, just leave a comment below to let me know that you'd love to see a video on that and be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified if that video gets released. Now to answer the real question of which machine would I recommend to you? Again, if you plan on engraving and not cutting, I think a diode laser is definitely the best place to start because you'll get the chance to find out if a machine like this is really a good fit for you or not. If you plan on doing engraving, cutting, and things of that nature, that's where I would recommend you look into a CO2 laser, but be sure that you understand all the variables that go along with running a machine like that. I will recommend one of my other videos that focuses more on the setup of my CO2 laser so you can get a good idea of what all goes along with running a machine like that. Thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon, especially Tony at Woodland Iron and my top supporter, Kyle Hickson. 
thank you for your continued support. For anyone looking for something to listen to, I'm also part of a podcast called The Working Hands Podcast. It's a good listen. It has lots of good laughs, tips, and tricks. Again, I want to thank everyone for watching this video, and until next time, I will see you on the next one.